Hey everybody, I am with my dear friend Crystal Quack from Singapore. She's someone that I have followed on social media for I think what three or four years, three right? Three or four years, yeah. Yeah, same and as well. She's been a great uh, supporter and follower of the blog, and she is a real thought leader in Asia. And she has just joined Twitter. So tell us a little about about your new job in yeah. Asia for Twitter. What's that all about? So at Twitter right now, I look after content for our international markets, and that includes Asia, Middle East, and Africa. And what that really means is that we look after our key storylines and help advertisers tell better stories on Twitter. And we don't mean just advertising per se, but how do you really use Twitter as a great platform to showcase the human side of your brand, to really connect with your users, and use it in a more meaningful and contextually relevant fashion. So that's what I really do at Twitter, and content really means anything from a tweet to an infographic to anything at all that can really speak to your audience and get to them in a meaningful fashion. So how much of the of this is actually creating content for your customers and how much of it is training them to do better? Um, I would say it's both because we provide the strategic uh, guidelines to how to do that and we also help educate them, especially when client education is not at a peak at this moment, to see how we can better help them understand what are the key things you need to know about Twitter, where are you on the maturity index and how can you turn in a better way. So both, I would say. Okay, so I'm just like a little jealous about you working for Twitter and I mean it's such a cool company and uh, oh we got great ambience now yeah because of the garbage man's going by here just thought just thought I'd let you know so I mean uh, it's okay yeah so anyway so tell us something that was like exciting or unexpected or surprising about starting for Twitter. So there are a couple of little stories. Um, when I I've, jo- I've been on Twitter for seven years, and when I joined Twitter, wow. I was really excited because um, I could finally really get to know the company really well, use all our tools, and I was so excited. It was like a kid in a candy shop. So but you <laughs> you were getting to use special secret Twitter tools, right? Yeah. <laughs> kinda, kinda, yes. <laughs> there, we, we have a lot of interesting things that we use for advertisers, internal stuff. Yeah. And tell us about like on your first day in San Francisco, the, yeah. what happened? So on our first day at San Francisco, we actually got to meet our CEO himself, De Costolo, and it was a really great experience because he really communicated the importance of being open and transparent as a company, what our core values are, and he spoke to all of us one-on-one to see what uh, we could do to grow together as a company, and I really believe in this vision at that at point in time. It's not really me drinking Twitter cool aid per se, but you can really feel when a company is together and moving towards a common purpose when and when it's not and that's what I really love about Twitter because we all want to defend the user's voice we want to be open and transparent and we are committed to being a vehicle of expression to everyone around the world and that's why Twitter is such a massively great platform and I love this company so much so what's the buzz in Asia right now what is hot in social media that yeah. you can uh, uh, teach something new to all of our readers on Grow? Oh, wow. Um, there are a lot of very interesting things that happen on, in Asia, and I think it's because of cultural nuances. I would say that the rise of micro social networks like your Kakao and your Line, these are micro social niche networks where people like to just communicate with their close friends. Like, even your path is really popular in the nation, that's one thing. I think the second thing that is happening on the brand side is the rise of social intelligence centers. Like we know it as social listening centers in the US, but it's really making a big comeback here in Asia right now because brands here are starting to understand the importance of mining these insights for intelligence and understanding the users better and linking it back to business intelligence. So I think these are the two broader things that you see in the user and brand side that is really coming together for Asia. And Asia is such a complex place because in Asia, you don't just um, talk about Asia per se, you talk about Asians. And there are many different countries in Asia itself, and they're all so different. I'm in Singapore, but a lot of things in Thailand and Indonesia and Malaysia are so different, and it's really, really fascinating if you're into psychology and culture. And, yeah. 
and oh. it affects a lot of things. So, yeah, so excited, and I'm so happy for you taking you. on this new job and this new challenge. So tell everybody how they can find you on the web if they want to follow your adventures. Sure, um, and by the way, I have to say this, Mark is an amazing person. I've always enjoyed reading Grow for a really, really long time. So I'm really happy that you know we're finally meeting today in Sydney of all places. Oh yeah. Um, now do you take a check? Should I pay you for this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll get it from you later in terms okay. of drinks. But having said that, um, you can follow me at Lady Xtel, L-A-D-Y-X-T-E-L on Twitter. Um, I write at ladyxto.com and I write for Huffington Post and Harvard Business Review as well. All right, well, thank you so much. It's been such a delight getting to meet you. Thank you, I appreciate that. And Mark, you're amazing. I'm going to say this. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.